carp are actually huge. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the vlog today. I'm out here with my buddy Ryan, rig boy. We are hitting some apartment ponds, little urban setting, having a bunch of fun. I'm also gonna tell you guys a little bit about my ultimate light backpack bank fishing setup, man. We've got an, uh, a tackle box set up with all the essentials I think you're gonna need on a day-to-day -day basis for hitting the banks. We got a couple combos on us, and we are just gonna go ahead and get right into it. You're gonna see some crazy, what you say, Asian grass carp. These things are monsters, dude. They look like sharks in the water. We got some cool footage for you guys, man, but let's go ahead and get lines in the water. Well. I can't even get to the spot without Ryan pulling a fish out, dude. As soon as I park, haven't even filmed the intro yet. Okay, well that works. Texas rig or something? Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. Exo pod. Bada bing, bada boom. Check him out, man. Throwing down here by this waterfall. By the way, it's a little windy. Well, let's throw down a Texas rig then. Oh, the biggest carp you've ever seen. There's huge carp in here, I remember. Oh, there's a bite. Wow, that was probably a bluegill because he ain't got it. Yeah. That was an aggressive bite. Yep. I still have the majority of my tail. It was definitely a bluegill. <laughs> nice, on again. Okay, they're hanging out over there, huh? Hanging out by the waterfall. Jeez, maybe I should throw on a crawl. I think you caught all of them out of here, but let me double check. Yeah, Ryan's killing it already with two fish. He's throwing a Texas rig, different style plastic though. He's got that more craw shaped style bait and uh, he's able to punch through almost like that thick moss on top of the water over there by the waterfall and that current is probably attracting a lot of those fish and they may just be sitting under that thick layer of moss. Whoop! I'm over here trying to dangle the red shad at exo ribbon. Was doing real good on it the other day. See if I can't get a worm bite this morning. Otherwise I might switch over to, I've got some Kraken crawls on me. Kind of got what I would call the ultimate bank fishing setup in this bag today. Just when I want to travel light. I got, uh, well, I'll tell you all about it here in just a minute. Well, I won't spoil anything, but I got the essentials. Let me tell you that. Fish for a minute, see if I can't land a little something or just watch Ryan catch them all. <laughs> and we'll get into the tackle box. So Ryan just flips a fish up here. It's his third one. His rod's like in the tree, about to fall in the water. And he's over here, his his fish came off the hook. Well, it turns out he got catfished. He flung it up here and- just trying to get in the boat, man. Uh, we're dealing with all kinds of issues out here. All I know is they want what he's throwing. I got to get a worm bite, in fact, my line's very heavy, but a fish isn't swimming with it, so I'm definitely in some, some brush. Look at this carp. Massive. Guys, I mean 50 pounder. Do y'all see him? Huge. His tail fin, his tail fin was like this big, which y'all can't really reference, but that's like huge. I'm, I'm, I might have a grass carp. Dude, what do I have over here? I was gonna say, got someone's line. It felt so weird. A swim jig, I think. Oh, a shad chatterbait. Where's the end of this line? Well, that's an interesting first catch. I'm just going to try and take out as much of this fishing line from the water as I can for the next person who would get snagged on it. Got it, all right. I don't know if y'all saw that little technique there, but as long as you've got something to wrap the line around a few times, you can really get some good leverage. Sometimes you'll wrap it around your hand. Well, you can see it was kind of starting to dig in and you will definitely get cut up from the fishing line, so, okay. Let me reel this in, and we are going to toss this out for whoever lost it. There's my good deed for the day. Maybe I'll get rewarded with a little catch. I've been showing it on the vlog a lot lately, but it's pretty cool. Making a move, y'all. Heading over to the other side of this place. Oh, the shortcut. This is why you invite Ryan, man. He knows the spots. He's got the shortcuts. We are over to the other side in record time. This is insane, man. These carp are like actually huge. I've never seen carp this size before. Oh my God. They're just cruising on the surface. Second time today. Somebody's lying. Dude, I don't know what's going on today. I could have some I could have some good money on the end of this. Is that my bait? It's my bait. <laughs> I left my rod in the water because I opened this pool to get the, the footage of the carp. <laughs> Alright, let me venture out here again. We could try and uh, we could just walk through the tunnel real fast. I'm gonna cruise with the chatterbait, I think, for a second and see if I can get anything. There we go, got one on the chatterbait. 
All right. Come on in. Right along the bank. The drag on this thing. What is going on, man? I'm telling you what. <laughs> Get up in here. <laughs> Whoo, chatterbait fish. <laughs> Ow, almost got hooked right there. That was the closest on a chatterbait hook I've ever been. All right, chatterbatter. Chatterbait. <laughs> Cruising. <laughs> there we go, man. I was getting nervous there for a second. We're throwing the chatterbait along the bank, though. Got it done. Chunky little dude. Natural color. Saucy swimmer as the trailer. Gonna see if we can't uh, pull a number two, three, four, five, six more bass out of this place. Doing the same thing. I might just kind of start cruising the bank and seeing if we can't work a little repeat on that. Otherwise, Feels good to get a fish, and I'm definitely looking forward to telling you guys about my tackle box I got going for the bank fishing missions, y'all. So stay tuned for that. Alrighty then. We're just gonna go for a little repeat. Boom. Ooh, that's a chatter bait right there, y'all. Carl's bait and tackle save 30% off on this thing right here with the Love membership, like your boy. Yeah, if you guys have never thrown a chatterbait before, it was one of my early confidence baits. This thing right here is a half bounce. I'm sure I started with something like a quarter ounce because I didn't really know what size to get. And I think a quarter ounce is popular and just like the standard original Z-Man chatterbait, which is very common. This one right here is the jackhammer. Yeah, man, so this is just a, a solid moving bait of choice, especially if there's a lot of grass right here. You're not going too deep. You can kind of control the depth at which this thing sits because of your retrieve. So you can reel it in a little bit faster if you want to stay higher. You can go a little bit slower if you want to cruise down low. You can also, I've heard some people kind of popping it. So you could you could work this thing on the bottom, but I don't see as many catches that way, probably just because I don't fish it that way as much. But you feel that blade flutter. That's a key with the chatterbait or with the bladed jig. They're essentially one and the same. I think Z-Man just kind of coined the term chatterbait if I'm not mistaken. And so yeah, you feel that blade through the rod tip fluttering and essentially you know you've just got your standard casting jigs which might look something like just the the head here with the hook right the skirt and then you throw on your plastic of choice a lot of times it's creatures or crawls on those standard casting jigs well on these ones where they add the blade it's now primarily a moving bait and you're getting a good kick out of the trailer a lot of people will use those swim bait style trailers you know varying from like three and a half to maybe even five or so inches on a chatterbait just depends what the bass are eating in your area. So if there's smaller bait fish that you're seeing along the edge, maybe go with a smaller profile. If there's maybe potential for some bigger bass or there's some larger bait, maybe go with that larger one. Uh, I think the smaller size should theoretically entice more bites, especially at some smaller ponds. So keep that in mind. There's a lot more commotion in the water, a lot more vibration and disturbance, which is going to attract these bass. So for example, this spot right here, there's a slight stain. I'd rather have this with a little bit more vibration than a standard swim jig, which is not going to have the blade. And that would be a more subtle approach. I use that whenever the grass is just real thick up to the surface and this blade is either going to get caught or I'll use that if it's, you know, clearer water, almost a more natural presentation. I'll mix it up. I mean, a chatterbait, there's nothing wrong with chatterbaits in clear water, especially a jackhammer with that paint matched blade and every thing looking that nice green pumpkin color so chatterbaits man that was an early on confidence bait for myself if you haven't thrown one get you some i recommend just these natural greens for clearer water and then i'd go black and blue or shad as in white for the stained water i think ryan and i are going to make a little move over to the next spot real fast yeah there's almost no catches here like on fish brain i don't know if this really has much other than bluegill yeah we're not uh feeling this spot has got anything promising so we're gonna make yet another move y'all a day of pond hopping, why not? All right, man, Ryan brought us out to the honey hole. Look at this little thing. Can hardly even see it, we're just pulling up. Well, since we ain't caught nothing yet, let me go ahead and show you guys this tackle box, man. I've been talking a lot about it, hyping it up. Check me out. Got the Guggen Squad Bass Mafia box. This is probably gonna be my go-to bank fishing box from now on, as well as most likely kayak stuff. Uh, I had all these clips in one little pocket, but I guess they kind of got shifted. Anyways, here's what we're rocking. We're just gonna go, uh, we're just gonna go like we're reading a book over here. I got two square bill crankbaits, uh, shad, I tend to have luck with almost no matter the clarity, so I just figured I'd rock this because if it's stained or clear water, I can get away with just a couple. I'm just trying to have a little bit of everything in this box. And so one of these 
is a Carl's Amazing Baits crank. And I believe this is like a, probably a one to three foot diver. And then on the flip side, I've got uh, one that I picked up in an MTB box. This one that I'm now holding, and I believe it is a three to six foot diver. So I've just got some kind of shallow, shallower depth cranks for, uh, you know, when you're hitting the banks. Actually, neither of these would be good to throw here because it's so shallow right in front of us that you'd catch nothing but grass. Next up, I got two jerk baits. We actually received this little guy in a mystery tackle box. He's light and you can keep him pretty close to the surface. And then we've got a Guggen Squad Scout. This is one of the juniors, I believe, three to five foot diver. So we got a couple jerk baits, fish those in some clearer water. I've also got a lipless. I could get away with the lipless here probably because I could just really crank this thing, rip it through some of this grass and I wouldn't have to worry about it diving down. It's not gonna be the easiest thing to fish here, but it would probably get some hits. So I've got a lipless crankbait in here as well. Uh, you guys know I love the lipless because you can control more of the depth and you can also rip through some of that grass and uh, they produce some bites. Shotgun Shad, this is probably my favorite color. Next up we have got a frog. Uh, white belly is what I've been catching a lot of fish on lately. I just kind of trimmed the legs a little bit. This is one of the Guggen Squad Filthy Frog. The seal right here keeps water from getting into the body. And I've had a great hookup ratio with the Filthy Frogs, man. It's been uh, really good compared to some other ones that I've thrown in the past. I tend to miss a lot of bites. It is summertime, so I'm going to be throwing this like right at sunrise or sunset along the bank, over pads, over grass. I mean, you can get this into the places you can't throw much else and really rip them out of some thick cover. Throw that on some heavy braid. Got have a frog then we've got a larger saucy swimmer this is the 4.8 inch i'm gonna let this plane go by this thing right here could probably work quite well in this pond you got pretty good clarity slight stain just a little blade to get their attention and a nice size swim bait with a good kick this right here an underspin with a swim bait is going to get you bites in a lot of different situations you can probably cruise this through grass even with this blade and not get caught on too much uh, so pretty subtle presentation with some flash to draw them in from a little further away then we got a buzz bait again mornings and evenings i'm talking sunrise and sunset or if it's just a very overcast day i might whip this thing out cast it along the bank and get some big fish on the buzz baits man top water uh, speaking of i got one more top water right here i got a popper i've caught a few fish on this thing now love this thing it just you you, you can you can you can walk it or you can work it a little slower, faster pops. You can do really a lot. It is a very versatile and you'll miss less bites because it's got the treble hook. So when a bass blows up on this thing, chances are you're getting it on the bank or in the boat. Moving right along, I tossed a natural color jig in here. I just went ahead and grabbed a gridiron. So this is a big three quarter ounce. This is a heavy jig. So I can get this thing out real far. I can also get it down deep, fish this around rocks and cover. And uh, yeah, stout hook. And I've got a Bandito Bug trailer on here. That way this is just kind of a grab and go box. Some of them I've already got plastics on so I can just rock and roll. Next up is going to be a juicy jig. This is just a standard casting jig, 3 8 ounce. And yeah, so a little bit lighter, black and blue. So if the water's more stained, I'm probably gonna be chunking this jig right here. It's got that flat head, so it's gonna stand that bait up and you'll get the kick out of whatever trailer you're using. In this case, again, it's another creature bait, black and blue bandito bug. And then I've got a chatter bait in here, but this one is for the stained water. This is a shad chatter bait, white in color. I'm gonna rock this thing whenever it is a very low visibility and I'm gonna put a white saucy swimmer as the trailer most frequently. That is gonna get some attention when you're fishing some water where you can really not see like chocolate milk. Then I've got a half ounce thick jig. This is the Guggen Squad's um, flipping jig. So you can get this down into some reeds, get this into some heavy cover, PB&J classic here we go guys so we could actually get through some thick stuff with this right here three quarter ounce natural color this is green pumpkin another thick jig in the box plenty of jigs gotta have them then we've got our standard collection of hooks weights sinkers bobber stops in here uh, i've got a mixture of what i throw most frequently is four aught hammer hooks so i've got plenty of those on hand i've also got some of those bobber stops if i want to peg my weights on texas rigs I have another uh, underbelly, I've got another bladed hook right here, so if I wanna throw something a little bit smaller, I've got that opportunity with the larger size right here on that big owner beast hook, that's the uh, flashy swimmer actually. And then this right here I believe is a Carl's flash bang hook, and this could accommodate something like a 3.3 or 3.8 inch uh, saucy swimmer. And then I've got my drop shot weights, ow. I've also got some sharp hooks. I got my drop shot weights, these are just a quarter ounce Carl's. And then I've got some tungsten in here. Check me out. Quarter ounce is what I'm carrying most frequently. We've got uh, some Wu Tungsten Never Chip. And then this is uh, another Carl's one right here. This is actually a green pumpkin weight. Check that out. So it'll blend in with some of those green baits you're throwing. 
if you're trying to get super stealth. Moving right along, a swim jig. This is the Grass Hero, guys. You're not gonna be getting caught in all this stuff. You're gonna whip right through it with this. It's got that weed guard, so you're not getting caught on a lot, yet you are moving this bait. So instead of uh, your standard jigs, your casting jigs, that you might fire away those heavy hook sets, this right here is gonna get eaten on the run. You're gonna get that little reaction hook set, so it's got a lighter guard. That way it can really get that hook through and penetrate the bass's lip. And also, it's gonna still be helping you get through the grass. You guys have seen me catch so many fish on the grass heroes they really really kick butt this is like a rotten pumpkin color if i'm not mistaken similar to a green pumpkin with a little orange on there and then i've got an electric shad saucy swimmer this is probably just the 3.3 inch i have a lot of luck with just the smallest size saucy swimmers on those grass hero swim jigs then we got a baby bull shad man this right here if there was a little bit less grass or, or maybe i just bite the bullet and just uh deal with the pain of getting some grass on the treble hooks this would probably be one of the best baits here as well because this thing you can fish it kind of slow and he's got such a good action and he's going to stay close to the surface so this guy right here could be one of the better options for this pond specifically but uh, i'm going to fish this guy probably in just some of that clearer water get more of a realistic uh, gizzard shad style bait in there and these treble hooks man you're going to pin them then we're closing things out y'all we are almost done we have got i think this is a half ounce uh, strike king shaky head i got this thing just in case i want to whip out the shaky heads on a moment's notice put one on here chunk it out deep and get to catching and then lastly guys we have a couple chatter baits check us out we got black and blue for the stained water like i was talking about with a uh, bandito bug trailer and then I've got another jackhammer. This is just, uh, so on the jackhammer, the blades are color matched. It's also got a double keeper for your plastic so they're not getting torn off and ripped up as much. I, I really do like the jackhammers, but I would say if you're just getting into fishing or you're just trying to throw chatterbaits for the first time, I would just get the originals. That way you're not spending a ton of money breaking the bank on a couple chatterbaits because they do go up there in price. Now you can save money on these and everything in this box I think I've got from Carl's Bait and Tackle. So if you guys want to save up to 30% on your baits, go ahead and sign up for a Carl's Club membership if you're ordering in bulk and get you some of this stuff right here. Uh, last thing to note, we talked about the chowder baits a lot in today's video so I won't bore you with the details. Last thing is I've also got some uh, nail weights in here. I just realized they, they kind of fluttered into another section of the box and this is what I'll do. I'll put these in like the end of a Sanko, like a lunker log and I'll get a little weight on there and I'll rig it up like Nico, Nico rig style. So this right here, we're not missing much, man. I know it's not the, I, we're missing a couple key players. I don't have a spinner bait. I'd like to put a spinner bait in here, but a lot of those spinner baits would take up more sections. And I just wanted to have about everything I use on a day-to-day -day basis and what's been catching me the most fish throughout the summer and the rest of the year, honestly, just having everything on a moment's notice. If I take out the yak, go hit the bank, and I don't want to carry every single item in my tackle box. So if you guys are looking to fill up something that's going to be an all-purpose go-to for yourselves, all this stuff can be purchased at Carl's Bait and Tackle. And the last thing I will mention is I, I also threw in some soft plastics for today because I knew I might need some trailers or want to throw some Texas rigs. So I got a couple lunker logs, standard man Sankos, east coast to west coast, they're going to catch fish. Then I got some cracking craws. I brought black and blue and I brought natural because I knew I could use some on trailers or just depending on the clarity, I'd throw those as my standard Texas rig for the day. Here's those slim shakes that I could put on that larger shaky head or also just a Texas rig if you just want to go that route and that's what you've got tied on. And then fumbling around here's my 3.3 inch saucy swimmers in case i needed to put a couple extra trailers on those baits that i brought uh something like that chatterbait because you know we lost one earlier i brought the pliers and i brought my underwater gopro in case we got some cool catches and could get some underwater releases but the water has proven to be a little less than uh, adequately clear today so i haven't gotten any of those in today's vid also i was going to fly the drone up but since we're so close to the airport it won't let me fly it so today's video was going to be so focused and b-roll heavy but it ended up not being that. So I apologize. I had the best of intentions, but the water's not clear enough for the underwater stuff and the drone will not take off. I had the thing fired up, dude, ready to go. Spent five minutes. Like, I'm going to get the best, best drone shots of that last spot we were at. And guess what happened? It says cannot take off. I was like, okay, great. So anyways, y'all, Ryan and I are going to cast out here a few more minutes and then we go and dip. I'm going to hit me some Chipotle. I think he's probably got some stuff to get done today. I hope y'all enjoy this episode. Let me take you over to the big camera at the car. I'll catch up with you there. All right, y'all, we hope you enjoyed the video. Got to show you our go-to all-around tackle box for bank and kayak fishing. We're going to see it a lot in future videos. Also, Ryan, I'm sure you'll be seeing him in more videos. I have a lot of fun fishing with him. I know you guys probably enjoy when you get to see some catches on these videos. Luckily, he was able to provide today. And uh, for that, he's going to be linked down in the description and probably on all future videos, man. So we had a bunch of fun. Thank you for showing me the honey holes, dude. Yes, and, sir. And uh, we'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace, guys. <gasps>